for all verified facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome. Most of us have accepted that we need masks if we are to fight COVID-19 and indeed stay alive. But what kind of masks? There are many kinds of masks. There's the bandana style, surgical, cotton, multi-layered, not multi-layered, stitched, N95, N95 with respirators, without respirators. So the, so the offering is quite vast. So we speak to someone who is not a medical doctor, but someone who is a specialist in flow modeling and hydrodynamics. After all, we are talking of respiratory droplets. My guest for today is also the co-author of a study called Visualizing the Effectiveness of Face Masks in Obstructing Respiratory Jets, which has been quoted widely. And I'm pleased to be joined by Professor Manhar R. Dhanak, Department Chair, Professor and Director of CTEC at uh, the Department of Ocean and Mechanical Engineering, Florida Atlantic University. He specializes on ocean turbulence, hydro hydro hydronomics and flow modeling. Uh, Professor Dhanak, thank you very much for uh, joining us. So tell us, first of all, what got you interested in this subject, which is specifically how uh, uh, respiratory droplets, which are the key uh, carriers of COVID-19 virus, uh, behave and uh, the need for masks? Yeah, uh, good evening and uh, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, so what we got interested in was that we've been studying uh, fluid mechanics. Uh, and in fluid mechanics, uh, what you uh, study is the airflow and we try and see how we can uh, visualize airflow in different types of airflow. Now, what happens with these uh, uh, coughs and uh, sneezes or even when you accept any exhalations like uh, breathing, talking, laughing um, and uh, also um, uh, singing, all of those, uh, what they do is they emit uh, droplets, uh, different size droplets. The larger droplets uh, fall to the ground, they're heavier and they fall to the ground very quickly. But the small aerosol sized droplets, very small size, smaller than the size of your hair, uh, tend to travel uh, far and they linger in the air for longer. So we were able to, the techniques that we had developed in uh, fluid mechanics, we were able to use that to visualize uh, what happens to these droplets, uh, how far they travel, and uh, what uh, what uh, can be done to um, mitigate their, their passage and also right. uh, what they linger for, uh, the amount of time they linger in air for. Right. And and professor, so what are the key findings? I mean, uh, that uh, uh, from your study, if you could, if you could, you know, uh, sort of quickly uh, take us through the the you know the key kind of masks and uh, what they did to prevent or not prevent the spread. So, so what the masks do is they, they, when you wear a mask, it uh, what it does it uh, it um, catches the droplets from uh, being emitted, but some of them go through. So you know the this tiny droplets, like I mentioned, aerosol size droplets do get get through, depending on the size uh, type of the mask. What we found was that if you use a, a simple bandana type uh, mask, uh, then uh, droplets go through. What happens without without the mask? You know the the droplets when you cough or sneeze can travel about 12 feet you know, in front of you. With a bandana type, uh, type mask, we found that they cut down the distance. You know, still things coming out, but we cut it down to about four feet. Um, if you then uh, uh, look at different types of masks, what we found was that if you take a, a, a two-layer stitched cotton mask, so it's stitched around the edges, uh, and it's a quilted cotton, this quilting cotton is called. So, you know, the number of uh, threads per inch is high, and that mask uh, performs uh, really well. So instead of four feet, you cutting down to about two and a half inches, um, uh, the, how far it travels from, the, from your face. So that we found in, among the um, cloth mask or fabric mask, that was uh, the most effective. It's a custom made uh, uh, mask. Now, there are other masks, you know, as we go uh, forward, the commercial masks are, are becoming more available, you know, before there was a shortage of them. And so we looked at uh, a few of them. There is a, this um, uh, a surgical cone mask that's available. We found that that does leak uh, uh, somewhat from the front. It's still, uh, you know, not as good as that two-layer cotton mask, uh, cotton fabric mask. And uh, then also we looked at uh, a nanofiber mask. Uh, 
and that seemed to be really good. Uh, there's also the N95. Again, those are, have been proven to be uh, effective in terms of not releasing or leaking anything through the uh, mask. But one of the things we found was that the droplets tend to escape from the side of the mask. Like, you know, when you wear a mask, how well it's worn, uh, it has to be worn very snugly and it starts to leak from the side if you pick his nose. So overall, uh, you know, good quality mask is, is a good, um, uh, is a requirement and it, it does it does help. Right. So now when you talk about, you know, the two and a half feet uh, propulsion or uh, six feet or eight feet, you're talking about someone actually sneezing or coughing or is it normal conversation which can send out the droplets at that speed or that distance? Uh, and I was uh, talking about a coughing and sneezing, right? So that's right. when it's uh, very violent and it goes far. However, when you're talking and uh, singing or, uh, uh, or laughing, it still uh, goes uh, forward. The, these droplets tend to linger for a while because they don't, they're very light and so they don't fall to the ground. They can linger for minutes or even, uh, you know, hours. And so what happens is if there is any breeze blowing, you know, anywhere of this, uh, towards you or away, uh, they tend to blow with, with the breeze. So they can, in a, if you're in a confined room and you are there for a long time, you know, with somebody who is, uh, who is sick, then just talking, you know, can create a, a lot of these droplets that are lingering in the air and uh, could be a source of, um, uh, you know, potential infection. Right. So, uh, as you look ahead, uh, you know, what, what's the best case situation? I mean, you know, so if I were to wear an N95 mask as, as one example, or both people were to make uh, N, uh, wear N95 masks, assuming there were two people in a room. Now, is that the safest possible situation? No, I'm, and I'm asking because, you know, as people want to get back to work uh, and are getting back to work or schools, as the case might be, yeah. uh, they want to know what is my, you know, how do I protect myself fully? Or is there no such thing as full protection? Uh, so you, each time you wear a mask, and you know, whatever mask you wear, and I think the good quality mask uh, it matters, uh, you reduce the risk of uh, infecting others and also infecting yourself. I mean, that is uh, one of the key things here. There's always a risk, right? There's a, because this um, pandemic, you know, this uh, virus, it spread not just uh, from the air, air, it's not just airborne, but it's also through touch and, you know, touching and that sort of thing. Uh, and so uh, there's always a risk, right? There's, but you uh, significantly reduce the risk if you are both wearing um, good quality masks. Right. And, and you did mention that, uh, you know, these small droplets, which I think is what the World Health Organization has also said subsequently, can travel and linger uh, for a while. So how and why does that happen? And uh, I mean, is this unusual or is it how all droplets of that size behave? I mean, I'm talking about droplets which are emitted from the mouth. Yeah, so the, uh, you see what happens is that these uh, tiny droplets, their surface area is large compared to their uh, weight. So gravity tends to pull all the droplets and everything down to the ground. However, because the surface area is large, the air resistance tends to uh, um, resist their motion downwards. So that's why they, they linger. So it, the smaller the droplets are, the surface area is comparatively larger, and so they, they tend to uh, linger for, for long. These droplets are, are not just emitted when we cough or when we exhale. It's also when you, you, when you uh, flush or anything, you know, in, in your bathroom or uh, it's created there also, in fact, uh, aerosols are, uh, you know, no, uh, people have studied aerosols for a long time. It's, you know, they're uh, in everywhere, all kind of dust particles could be of that size. And uh, also, if you re recall, you know, when we were talking about the um, uh, hole in the ozone layer was created by these aerosols because they tend to rise up and uh, uh, affect the, the atmosphere overall. Right. 
Right. So uh, going ahead, uh, uh, Professor Manak, so what is your uh, recommendation now? I mean, having gone through the data, having seen what's worked and what's not, uh, I mean, I'm sure one recommendation is to obviously stay at home. But if uh, that were not to be the case, uh, what is your, uh, you know, the mix of, uh, uh, I, I mean, either masks or distance and what is the combination that you recommend? So, I, I, you know, as you said, the, you know, the people are looking to be, go back to be, uh, opening up uh, businesses safely and so on. So, uh, wearing a mask is important. Wear a good quality mask. You know, if you if you can, uh, if you're not able to get a nine, N95 mask or, uh, you know, these, some of these commercial ones, uh, make sure that the, the mask that you wear has got a number of layers. The more layers there are in the mask, you know, the better. Uh, even there's a you will find somewhere where you know on the on the websites uh, where you can do a, like a folding handkerchief, a handkerchief yeah. folded four times. You can do that, and uh, we can um, you know using that sort of mask if it's homemade will will help. So wearing masks is is good. Uh, keeping social distance is also still required. Uh, you know we talk about six feet. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's four feet. If you're wearing a mask, if if, if everybody is wearing a mask, the what they've found is that the if um, um, you know majority of people, it's in um, 95% of the people wear masks uh, in day to day business. You know you can dramatically uh, uh, end this uh, pandemic. So keeping social distance and still you know washing your hands uh, and those are still uh, a requirement. Right. Right. Uh, last question, uh, Professor. So, uh, you know, this is a disease which we are all trying to understand, uh, including everyone in the world of medicine and your world too. So what are you working on now and are you still studying this and uh, are there any other angles that you're exploring for future uh, research? Uh, yes, there's been a, so much interest in what we have done, you know, worldwide interest in, uh, uh, in, in our work. Uh, and so the next steps we are taking, one of the things we're looking at is that uh, you know, uh, from the other side, from the protection side for this mask, you know, if you're wearing a mask, how safe is it that, you know, if you have somebody coughing, uh, what can come through the mask? That's one aspect. We are also looking at, you know, people are putting different type of barriers, you know, um, around desks or in the shops, uh, different type of queuing, you know, it, in, uh, in places. Uh, we are trying to study what are some effective ways of uh, providing additional protection. You know, people, some people wear face shields, so we've been looking at that. And uh, the overall, what we're trying to do is to look, or some other aspects we're looking at is the effect of the background conditions, the atmospheric conditions on these droplets. Can, you know, for example, what, we, what is found was that if it's more humid, you know, the uh, transmission rate is less. Uh, so we are looking at the humid conditions also, the people talk about ionization in the air. You know, in a room, you could uh, co create ionization, which tends to uh, have all these small droplets combined to make bigger droplets, and then they fall off. So those kind of things are being um, uh, considered, and uh, we are uh, studying that uh, going forward. Right. That sounds fascinating, uh, Professor. Uh, we do look forward to more of your research. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts and insights. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, thank you for having me.